Hello, everybody. Great to see a great audience uh, come together to discuss this important topic. Thanks a lot for the invitation and thanks for organizing the seminar. Well, uh, country by country reporting, there are uh, many actors uh, that would, would be influenced by that and that has an opinion uh, on country by country reporting. And the investors uh, are only one of those. In addition, we have civil society, governments uh, and companies, not the least. But I'm here to talk from, a, from an investor point of uh, view. So first of all, uh, let's make it clear, what, what is country by country reporting really? Um, it is about companies reporting not only on an aggregated level, uh, but actually splitting uh, the reporting up on a country by country uh, level. And what kind of data are we talking about? Melmona mentioned uh, already uh, the Publish What You Pay proposal, about eight. Uh, figures. Uh, you can read more about the details uh, in, in the report that they have published. But by and large, it's about production revenues, it's about investments, costs, profits, uh, tax, uh, and other payments to, to governments. You're all familiar with the paradox uh, of the poor, of, of the paradox that many of the poor countries are actually rich in, in resources. You're also familiar, familiar with the capital flight uh, and the consequences uh, for the developing countries. Are you aware of the fact that the level of corruption uh, is quite high in, in many of these countries as well? And the way we see it, country by country reporting could be one of the tools that can be an effective uh, tool to combat these uh, phenomena. It's about increasing transparency. Uh, it's about making these kinds of, of capital flows more evident. Uh, it is about uh, greater accountability, both for governments and for companies. This is a proposal that has been discussed for a few years already. Um, you're probably familiar with the, the process that goes on in the US. Uh, the Dodd-Frank introduced reporting in, in such a format, and now the American uh, Securities and Exchange Commission uh, are working out the, the details uh, on, on how the, such a reporting requirement would look like. Um, the process is going on in the EU, and hopefully we'll, we'll see uh, concrete results of that quite soon. And also, as mentioned here in Norway, uh, the process is going on. I very much look forward to to hearing the uh, the commission or the committee later on uh, today. Well, KLP then, uh, that is Norway's largest life insurance company. Uh, we manage mention, uh, pensions mainly for, for local municipalities uh, and their employees, such as nurses, kindergarten employees all over the country. Uh, we also have insurance services, we have a bank, we sell mutual funds uh, to private investors such as any one of you or any institutional investor in Norway. This adds up to more than 330 billion uh, Norwegian kroner under asset, in assets under management. And our objective is of course to, to safeguard uh, these assets uh, and to create a return uh, for all our clients. And to do that, we think it's, it's crucial uh, that these funds are managed in a, in a long-term perspective and in a sustainable and responsible manner. And I probably wonder, what is the link really between a Norwegian life insurance company uh, and uh, developing countries and country-by-country and, and -country reporting? Well, actually, there is a quite direct link from our offices here in, in Oslo um, to these companies. We're investing in approximately two and a half thousand companies, which in turn have operations all over the world. In our opinion, the best way to manage the pensions we have under asset management is to invest with low risk uh, and a low cost. And that means that diver diversification in other, in other words, spreading the risk is really a key to us. And that is why KLP and most other institutional investors as well um, invest in almost all of the largest publicly listed companies. <coughs> we, of course, monitor these, uh, these companies continuously from, from a sustainability and responsible 
point of view and we engage in dialogue and it also happens that we divest from companies because we find that they're not responsible or sustainable. That, I will not talk more about that, but that's a kind of important background to, to why we have engaged in, in this topic as well. So what I'm saying is the point is that we're invested uh, in most of the companies that are now being asked to report in a country-by-country -country format. And we think also that we as investors would benefit from such a reporting standard. The way we see it, transparency is really a cornerstone uh, of corporate responsibility for, for, any, uh, for any corporate actor, both for society and, and stakeholders. So um, we do believe that an implementation of, of the country by country reporting would have a tremendous impact on, on society. Uh, we've already heard about that, about uh, making governments and companies accountable, et cetera, et cetera. And we very much believe in these positive uh, effects. Uh, as, as number one, transparency, I think that's a, that's a key for corporate responsibility. And, and that's, of course, the important motivation for us to engage in this issue. But nevertheless, uh, the main argument for us as investors and the main argument for us to be an advocate of country by country reporting is and must be uh, financial. And we do believe uh, that country by country reporting would provide us with financially vi useful and uh, valuable information. It would be very useful from to in the risk assessments uh, that are being done and the valuation uh, of companies. And consequently for investment decisions uh, as well. For us as an investor and shareholder, it's very important that the information that our investment decisions are based on is accurate and detailed enough to give a correct picture of the, the company's operations. Uh, a couple of years back, uh, we also contacted uh, analysts that are covering extractive industries that are based in, in or that are working for broker houses based in Oslo and ask them about what their uh, opinions about such a reporting regime would be. And I thought I would share some of the arguments that they gave because what, 10 analysts uh, covering extractive industries here in Oslo uh, answered and 100% said that yes, country by country reporting would provide us with valuable financial information. And here you can see some of what they said. Uh, the heightened transparency implied by country by country segmentation will, in my view, improve valuation efforts by catering for more differentiation of asset quality. Another one said, easier to assess asset value per country, which is important as countries might have very different ge geopolitical fiscal risk factors. A third one said, ensures better understanding of companies. It's a problem not getting all the information you need. So it was a, a very clear answer from the analyst that we are using uh, analysis and valuations from country by country reporting is indeed uh, financially useful. Oops. Fortunately, the laptop made it. <laughs> Another factor that speaks uh, in favor of country by country reporting from a financial point of view uh, are the community relations uh, and these companies licensed to operate. We see that community relations are very, very influential on companies' operations and results, and especially when it comes to extractives, as they are very heavily dependent uh, on their location. Uh, these investments can potentially have a very strong impact locally, both in a positive way, and, but unfortunately also in a negative uh, way. So that is why we see that the appropriate disclosure can be an important and, and effective tool for them to manage, uh, to create trust and, and manage their local relations. Uh, we see that from the company dialogues that we've had, uh, from the divestment decisions that we made, 
uh, well, the extractive industry is unfortunately well represented on that list. Uh, we see that community relations are often uh, quite central to the problems that these companies are facing. Uh, we've also heard examples from, from companies saying that that actually are reporting uh, on a country-by-country -country, uh, format because they say that, well, this is our way to show that we are actually contributing. Uh, we are contributing the way we, we should do and uh, that makes them accountable to the, the local population. Uh, I also said that we, we own a bit more or less of, of all the largest publicly listed companies. One could say that we own a little chunk uh, of everything. Uh, there's an expression for that that is called universal owner. And that we're universal owners, uh, that means that for us it's not enough to rely on each investment that we have made. Uh, but we have to rely on the system, uh, the capital market as such. And the way we see it, country by country reporting, is important to secure a sustainable capital market. The increase in, in use of tax havens and hidden capital flows is uh, tremendous. And it's difficult to see and comprehend to what extent this actually influences uh, the capital market as a whole. We also think it's, it's difficult to, to see that secrecy either on, on uh, capital flows or ownership uh, or whatsoever in any way could contribute in any positive way. KLP has engaged in, in uh, these issues for uh, a few years already. We have given speeches uh, with uh, written consultative statements and we have discussed the topic with, uh, with many companies. And a new initiative now is a new report uh, that will be published on the 6th of December. Actually, there will be organized an anti-corruption day here at Literaturhuset uh, on that day. And that is also the day when the report will be uh, published. Um, we're doing this together with Transparency International Norway and EY. Uh, Last year, uh, Transparency International uh, published an international report uh, that's Transparency in Corporate Reporting. It addresses the, the largest uh, publicly listed companies um, and maps their degree of transparency, both when it comes to anti-corruption, but also country by country reporting. And we thought that was a very, such a good idea, so we, we contacted Transparency in Norway and asked, wouldn't you be interested in uh, doing such a report or doing a Norwegian re version of that report as well? And they are, so uh, they've collected data and work, been working on that report now, and the result will then be public uh, next week. So I hope to see as many of you as, as possible on that event as well. During the past years, we've seen uh, several cases of corruption in Norwegian companies. And that is very serious. Um, and KLP was at the time and still is uh, a shareholder in these companies. Uh, although these are very important investments to us uh, in KLP, we're still a quite small shareholder in these companies. Nevertheless, we want to be a responsible shareholder and, and perhaps also a, a demanding shareholder to some extent. Uh, so well, we hope that this report uh, on Norwegian uh, listed companies will be a, a, a valuable contribution to these discussions that we're having. In the international report, uh, the finance industry uh, stood out as laggards. Uh, that is, of course, something we as an industry uh, has to improve. Um, and I would like to take this opportunity to, to tell that we have also taken our own medicine. Uh, in KOP, we continuously uh, work uh, to secure good governance uh, and ethics in our own organization and our own operations. And uh, actually this year, uh, for the very first time, we actually reported in a country-by-country -country format. 
Yes, I know KLP is not. We're very, we have operations in very few countries, uh, and in, in that sense, not as complex as many of the extractive industries are. But still, that is our way to show or try to practice what we preach. Finally, I would like to, to briefly comment on the initiative from the Norwegian government. Uh, it's really, really great. We were very, very pleased to hear uh, when the, the government decided to, to propose uh, legislation for country-by-country country reporting. And as I said, I very much look forward to, to hearing the final results today. Uh, I think this is a very, very important first step and, and ho can also hopefully influence the process going on uh, elsewhere. Uh, I'm not so sure that I, I uh, will see all my wishes uh, fulfilled uh, in the, the proposal that will come, um, but still I, I have a few wishes and I just wanted to, to mention them. Uh, first of all is that the country by country report is included in the financial statements. This should not be an extra add-on or a section in the sustainability report or something. It should really be part of the financial statements. Only then can this information be financially valuable, as we as investors and as the analysts uh, are hoping for. The second is that it, the reporting would include all countries. Um, not only the countries where production is, is going on, but also tax havens and, and any, any country. Um, that's, that's a central element uh, of secrecy and, and capital flight, so um, no um, exceptions there. Third, um, we would like to see it include all sectors. Of course, it could be a useful first step to try it on with a few, ex um, with a few sectors, and of course the extractive industries, is, that's where it's most urgent. Uh, but still, when it comes to the use of tax havens and when it comes to capital flight, um, and when it comes to the financial uh, or, or the, the, value, the um, usefulness of the information financially, it, this information would be uh, as relevant for all sectors. So that is my, my wish list uh, to make uh, information from country by country reporting as useful as possible from a financial perspective. Would just like to, to wrap up by uh, asking, are there any questions of what I've mentioned so far? No, then I, I think I'll, I'll stop there. And uh, that was my brief introduction of, of why we as investors see uh, the country by country reporting and this discussion very, very valuable also from a financial perspective. And uh, well, what's, what's better than when a financial perspective and societal interests are really merged? So thanks again for the invitation. I hope that the, you will have very fruitful discussions further on later today.